Hey people, I'm back with another Football Talk with Stoke City, where I'm going to be catching up on Stoke transfers so far this season, who they've signed, sold and released, what position do I believe that they need to improve on, and where do I believe they will finish this season. Three weeks to go until the transfer window closes and Stoke have been a very busy team. They've signed about 10 players, 8 first team players and, and released around 15 players. The biggest loss for Stoke was probably Begovic, who went to Chelsea for 8 mil. Stoke City have signed so far this season the likes of Afali from Barcelona, Glenn Johnson and Shea Given, a few players that have got a load of experience. They've also bought in a Danish replacement for country for country, Jacobs Haggard, a possible number two for Butland. Bullshard, Afali and Joe Slew have all been great signings in this window. Stoke have released Wilson Palacios, Sorison and about Eight youth academy players. They have also sold Robert Hugh to Leicester, Stephen Nsonzi for seven mil, and Begovic for eight mil. Jamie Ness has left for free. This transfer window, Stoke have been incredibly busy. Let's start at the back with Stoke goalkeepers. With Czech joining Arsenal, Chelsea have been after a quality second choice keeper. Unfortunately, to Stoke fans, Begovic was that keeper and they got him for a steal of only 8 million. Sorison left the club in the summer as well, leaving only Jack Butland. Mark Hughes had bought in a young Danish replacement for Sorison, being Haggard, and Given joined as a free door of the team with the Premier League experience. I'm hoping that Butland can finally prove himself this season, but apart from that, I think that the keepers are sorted for this season. Moving on to their defence, newly signed right back Glenn Johnson will go into the starting lineup straight away with Bardsley as a backup. Wilkinson has re signed on a short term contract to improve his fitness. Glenn may be passed it to some people, but still knows the Premiership really well and well enough to, for a high mid table team. Bardsley is a great cover for right back. For the past few seasons, the first two centre backs that you always think about with Stoke is Hoof and Short Cross. Hoof has since permanently joined Leicester, Shawcross is now out for two months, so we'll be relying on Wilson and Cameron to step up, and Texera and Walshear prove they've got what it takes to play in the Premiership. Although in the past day, it has been reported that Mark Hughes has funds to bring in a new centre-back to cover. I'd personally bring one in anyway, someone who would go straight into a squad and can partner Shawcross when he's back from, from injury. Even their left-backs they've got two solid left backs at Stoke. Eric Peters have been my first choice. I think his first name is Mark Munaniz as a super bench player who can cover centre and left back. So overall with the Stoke defence on paper it looks pretty solid this season especially when Shawcross is back. I can't see too much changing before the end of the transfer season. Moving on to their midfield Stoke have got a choice of six centre mids. From Stephen Ireland to Whelan, Charlie Adams, Sidwell and youngster Ollie Shenton. They've also signed on loan from Chelsea, Van Ginkle. If I was to choose a Stoke formation, I'd probably go with a 4-3-3 formation with Afeli, Diouf and Bojan up front. Therefore, personally, Whelan may not get a first choice. If I was picking a midfielder three, Adams would be in the middle, Van Ginkle on one side and possibly a new centre mid. I'd, I'm going to place Ireland there at this moment but I would like to see a new centre mid that's got a little bit of speed. I'd like to see Oli go out on loan to a championship team just to get some more experience. He is really young. I think he was born in 97. They've not got the weakest midfield in the Premiership but they've definitely got the weakest point in the Stoke team this season. Stoke have got three very talented wingers. Mark Onatovis, Afeli from Barca's youth squad and Bojan, who I think is more of a winger than anything else. They missed out on Shakiri, and I'd like to see four wingers per team, so maybe Sparky has a player up his sleeves. Although that player would have to be a hell of a player to get into the first team this week in, week out. Apart from a new CDM centre mid and a sub winger, there isn't much more room to improve. Stoke have five strikers this season, so Sparky may have to play a 4-4-2 in some games. Mama Diouf did incredibly well for them last season, and if you ignore the United history behind him, he is an incredibly good striker, and he would be my first choice. Crouch and Walters are getting on a bit, but Crouch can still score, and Walters can cross a ball in well, so maybe use him in the cup games this season. You know Crouch is good from a cross with his head. I can't see them at Stoke next season, though. With the age against them and Sparky's improving and youthening up Stoke, 
I can't see him having too much of a career left at Stoke. Odom Wingy, I wouldn't have signed. I don't like his characteristics and his personality from what I've seen from interviews and from what other managers have said on Match of the Day. And their last striker, who came from Spain, Josh Lu, J O S E L U, Jos Lu, a player with a lot of promise. He signed for 5.75 mil. I can't see any more signings up front. I think he will definitely be their backup striker this season he'll definitely have a cup run in him he looks a really good player i don't think they need to have any more improvements so in my eyes stoke need a center back with someone like johnny evans from united i think him and shawcross would work really well van gal doesn't seem to approve on evans so you don't know stoke might be able to sign him up a little bit cheaper than what we might value him at i would like to see johnny evans partner shawcross as well as a centre back, I think a CDM centre mid that isn't past 28 years old, someone that can tackle, pass the ball pretty well, and has a little bit of speed on him, that can possibly sit on the outside of a 4-3-3. He may not have a lot of speed, but Huddleston from Hull would work in my eyes. Apart from that, I honestly believe Sparky has done an amazing job since replacing Tony Pulis. They don't just hoof the ball up the pitch and they don't go into dirty tackles all the time now. They think about where they're going to pass it. Simple passing. They've got a great attack nowadays with really impressive wingers. So where do I think or hope they will finish this season? Well, if they gel, if a team gels together, I'd reckon around 7th or 8th. If they have a bad start and the injuries get the best of them, somewhere around 9th to 12th. Definitely a high mid-table finish though. My 4-3-3 forward team would be Butland in goal, Glenn Johnson, Shawcross. I would like someone like Evans, but I would probably whack in their new signing Woolshed and Eric Peters on the left. Island, Adams and Van Ginkle as your free midfield. And Bojan, Diouf and Afali up front. Thanks for watching guys. I will try to bring out a few more of these videos as you all seem to really enjoy them. And if you want my say on any other team, please leave a comment below. If you want your own say or you have your own opinions on the Stoke team, leave a comment below. If you want to add anything else, again, leave a comment below or tweet me. Thanks for watching. I've been Mark Spark. This has been my Stoke Transfer Talk, Summer 2015. The Mod Collective, your number one Facebook page for all things mods. It's a way of life. We are a crowd of 50,000 followers keeping the faith and growing every day. Come check us out on Facebook and please hit that like button.